Stop doing the clicky little pen, oopy doopy, slippy sliding. Creams dry, <laughs> mats dry, shimmers dry. dry. You get too comfortable being that bitch. Not one person from Fenty Beauty has spoken to me. Maybe we'll cut this in post, probably not. Is it because you have so much lip filler that your lips are turning blue and purple <laughs> and you need the orange and the lip Color corrector. Color correct it? <laughs> it never looked like that on you. I think it did. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> At the Super Bowl, they were just gonna wheel out the Fenty Beauty gondola and say, come shop. <laughs> come to mama. Nobody's listening. Yeah. Listen. Oh, it's 10 a.m. Do you know where your wine is? In my gullet. In my <gasps> Not what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> I meant <laughs> What did you teach me the other day? Yeah. Do we have to bleep Yes. It really is. <laughs> a matter of fact, yes. Um, Cause bleep, it's a medical. You no. better bleep. <laughs> 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 it, is not, it is not a medical term. Oh, it's, it's not. No, bleep okay. all of this. Okay. All right. Yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That whole thing is just going to be like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Beautiful and Bob. <laughs> uh, we are talking about Flop. Flop Tina Bestie. Flop Tina. We are talking about brands that yeah. are in their flop era. Yeah. Because there's a lot. And it was funny at first because we were uh, brainstorming. Because, guys, I don't know about you, but 2024 for us, we're getting our little shit together. We're having, yeah, we're having meetings. We really are. I know. Mostly because 2023, if I think back on 2023, like my any my whole social media career, like even when it was taking off, was like stressful. But I think it was because I really wasn't doing um long form. So it was like mm. I was filming constantly. I was like always whatever, but it was all shorts and it was like that it was a routine or whatever. But then when I started the podcast, doing the video podcast, and then always trying to do like long form, whatever, doing both of those at the same time, I just reflect on 2023 and our year was just chaos. Like it was constantly like just close half on, trying to turn cameras on, moving lights, whatever the case is. Yeah. So our goal in 2024 is to like be organized because- And I feel like we're we off to a We don't have to start. live like this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't have to live like this. And let me tell you why. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we are doing great so far. Mm -hmm. We are like, we're going in with a game plan. Yeah. We're going in with the mentality to be more organized. Yeah. And I feel like we're doing- we're doing great so far. Yeah, you're doing good, sweetie. We're doing great, Diane. <laughs> yeah. But we but, really are. We're yeah. we're taking our time and we're making the best of our days of what's going to make <laughs> sense for us without doing yeah. too much in a day. Yes. But also not doing too little either with our time. Totally. So we're really trying to prioritize our time a little bit better of like when we're starting, how many things we could get done in a day without being too much or about you commenting that we all look tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You. Which honestly, yeah. it's like because I think things – come in waves and it might be obvious to other people, but I think when you're blinded by the work you're doing, you don't realize it. So to me, it was like, I started the podcast, then I brought you on the podcast. And then we started to realize that we had a dynamic on the podcast that like nobody else had, or if you will, like that there was something here between yeah. us in the makeup world with what we were talking about that was unique. And then I think our 2024 thing was like, I we had a conversation, I kind of had a mental breakdown to you on the phone. Uh, a week or so ago where I realized I was like, even with long form YouTube on the beauty channel, my Johnny beauty channel, I was like, I hate filming long form videos by myself because I don't like talking to myself like in that way for like a long video and the long whatever. And I think we're getting together or we got together the thought of like, there's a people are tired of the short content clickbait bullshit. They want yeah. education. They want people who know what they're talking about, which is both of us, which is this podcast. But then we, I, like, for a while was thinking, like, why aren't we doing that in that format as well? So that's what, which we mentioned last week, that on that channel is pretty much just going to be us now doing beauty YouTube stuff because – I don't want to do it alone. And to have two, the both of us that know so much about this, doing that kind of a thing is like, yeah, there's nobody, I'm, there's nobody doing what we're doing. Like, cause even every other fucking beauty podcast is like, 
drama shit and whatever the case is or yeah. like we're, nobody's dissecting things the way we kind of have it down to a formula and uh, we want to bring it over to beauty so that's we're kind of trying to be yeah. organized yeah and you get <laughs> you get a different perspective too of us like yeah we always talk about beauty here mm-hmm. but that's going to be a whole separate journey which i'm Girl. I am so excited oh, for it. Yeah. I think it's going to be so fun to see us more in action with the products, I'm going to say, because Absolutely. we've done like live purchaser passes where we've <laughs> yeah. tried stuff. But that's going to be more in depth of us seeing up close and personal, us yeah. applying product sometimes and yeah. doing full blown, you know, branded reviews or trying stuff for the first time. And it's funny, but it's educational. Yes. And it's, I'm really, I'm so excited for that aspect of it. I'm really, yeah. really, like, I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great. I have to say, I think my favorite episode of all of season one was like one of the last ones we did was like episode 49 or something when we were, I was in the robe and you were, had your hair tied up with the eye masks on Mm -hmm. like, because, and we tried the products on the NYX and the revolution. Like that's the energy that's going to be in these tutorials. Oh, (laughs) like trying it on because like for us to be able to write there, like, and we had so many ideas already, like full, full face of like one brand stuff, us buying each other, makeup that we hate and having to make it work yeah yeah girl, girl. and like, even i had the idea of like if i put my signature look on you absolutely and if i did your makeup and vice versa oh yes. that would be incredible and yes like, or, or just swapping makeup bags and like you have to use everything in the bag at <laughs> least in some degree yes like you have to put it somewhere yes. like i think that's even funny to kind yes. of be like what is this i know i love that all makeup we passed on in purchaser pass and like we, uh, yeah yeah, yes. there's so many <clears throat> fun things. So definitely go over there and check that out. But yes. we're talking about brands that are in their flop era. Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out. Um, <laughs> you coughed after we taped the first one and you were like coughing into a thing and your lip gloss got on it and you thought you coughed up blood. Because it was pink. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, oh, what's coming out yeah. of me? I was uh, like, hot pink. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> so we are going to talk about brands that are in their flop era. Yeah. And there was a lot of criteria, but let's take yeah. a quick break while mama re up their wine <laughs> and we'll be right back. <laughs> Brands that are in their flop era. So yeah. we started talking about, uh, we came up with the idea and we were kind of listing brands and you said something really interesting, which was basically because I, I thought of a brand and you, <laughs> which I thought, say like, it, yeah. say their name, <laughs> yeah. say their name, <laughs> Charlotte Tilbury. <laughs> and you looked at me and I was like, oh, like he doesn't agree. And you just p- looked at me dead in my fucking pupils and said, they had to have had a good era. Like, yeah. and I was like, you're right. Like in the sense of like, we're talking top of the beauty industry yeah. game. Like, and they have, they had to have been there and then fallen from it. So that was not only the criteria. In terms of like, they had something that was in, uh, and let me preface this, in our opinion. Mm-hmm. Yes. If you like these brands, if you use everything from these brands, it is what it is. We're because talking about from our perspective. Charlotte Tilbury is Yes. Top right now. It is top tier in terms of sales. Yes. But I'm talking heavy hitting, iconic, Girl. no people product trampling is, one yeah. another in the store to go buy makeup from this brand and this brand alone. And I think people are doing that with Charlotte, but it's not good cosmetics. <laughs> Which is gonna be another video coming up. So that'll be we'll we'll shelf that. But these brands kind of had to have that criteria. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You want to dive into the first brand? Yeah. So So, this is one that I feel very strongly about. And I think a lot of people will kind of feel this as well. So the first brand that is in their flop era right now is Anastasia Beverly Hills. Girl, (laughs) do you remember when Anastasia was in Sephora's as a one bay? So it was like a one, uh, like typically three or four shelved units. So it's a section, one bay of just brows. Yes. And then Macy's had the lead on liquid lips. Excuse me. Are you you all right? I remember that. Yes. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. You said, excuse you. And I said, what did I do? To my mic, because I hit it. Oh, I was like, what did I do? So Macy's had the lead on the liquid lips and all the newness from Anastasia, all the glow kits, all the (gasps) liquid lips, all the lip glosses, all the new products from Anastasia when they expanded from brows to lip and complexion and all that. I remember going to Macy's and I was excited because I wanted to try Dusty Rose and Pure Hollywood and uh, Crush, the liquid lip, Stripped, Milkshake, Party Pink. I I want to go on record and say I 
proudly since day one have fucking hated those liquid lipsticks. And I never jumped on the bandwagon. And I've hated them since day one. Back then, like in 2014, 2015, 2016, when everyone was putting liquid lipstick on their fingernails, toenails, eyelashes, like that's all anyone was using. Yeah. I felt like I was in the Twilight Zone where I was like looking around going like, is anybody going to say these are dry, cracking? But again, it all came down to the way your lips were. Like I don't have... Swedish pillow lips. So you never looked, it never looked like that on you. But me with my like white old grown eyelid. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I I was trying to be nice. I, (laughs) but I mean, to a degree, not as bad as it was on me. It was, they were, it was a dry formula. No matter what, who you are, what you did, unless you had lip injections (laughs) and you had Kylie Jenner fucking pillow lips. Well, no, they were not. The one who was selling all of them at the time was Jeffree Star and Nikki Tutorials who have fake lips. Yeah. Yeah. So everything looked plump and smooth and gorgeous yeah. on them. Going back to that, it was like the Anastasia of it all. It felt so new and refreshing yeah. to see this. And then when it launched in Sephora, when we were working there and just seeing this gondola get um, expanded to like a three yeah. bay and it was this full collection. And I remember just buying everything and being obsessed with these. And I know the liquid lip you know, category was just like a newer thing at the time with Jeffree Star and Anastasia. Yep. Uh, Kat Von D at the time had really great liquid lips and great colors and it was so much fun. Anastasia was the first one to come out. First of all, anytime they ever dipped their toe into a product category, Mama, they came out with shades. That was the thing about Anastasia I always respected was like if they came out with foundations, it was 50 shades. Liquid lipsticks, 50 shades. Lip glosses, 50 shades. It was like of gray. No, it was so many. peach nude. Yeah. Totally. And unlike Kat Von D, who also had an expansive shade range, Kat Von D was the liquid lipsticks that there was like an orange and a green and a purple and whatever. Anastasia. I was into those though. Of course, but Anastasia, I think why they got their notoriety was they were the first one to come out with those in-store. Neutral, beautiful. It was glam. It yeah. was for the glam girls. It was the pinks and the nudes and the brown. Yeah. Like it was for the glamazon. It wasn't the artsy Kat Von D. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. why they were people were <laughs> trampling. And when we worked at Sephora, I mean, it would that was the era of like what was the new Anastasia eyeshadow palette going to be? Because it was modern honest, Renaissance. After that, it was because modern my Renaissance God. was quite literally. A renaissance. It started like this eyeshadow wave of products coming out that everyone was trying to dupe the modern renaissance yes. palette. And it was like the 35-0 Morphe when that was like a thing yes. too. And I'm going to even loop in Morphe here to that yes. nostalgic Anastasia kind of vibe because it, the same thing happened to Morphe, which happened to Anastasia. Yeah. Anastasia was pumping out these products that were, it was one after another hit after yeah. hit after hit with the glow kits, the Nicole Guerrero glow kit. Girl, yes. Was amazing. Yes. The sun dipped glow kit, the that glow glow kit. It was such an an amazing time in makeup because they were doing yeah. things coming out with colors that we didn't see before an eyeshadow, lip liquid lipsticks, yes. lip glosses. Anastasia almost started the eyeshadow palette renaissance, no pun intended, in the sense that before the modern renaissance palette, everyone came in and bought a naked palette. Yeah. Which we would want to slit our throat because we were like please don't do this like because it was not and you remember there was when, nothing better no the time, when, there was crazy. nothing better we even always used to say when we did makeovers at the beauty studio we used because we never used the naked palette we used to have to use the old makeup forever single shadows and have like a i we carry them on like napkins and like the seafood <sighs> towels and like walk them over yes. to my like station and lay them out or like stack them and walk over with the dust all over my fingers from yes. every color and like drop them down. And do you remember right before the modern Renaissance palette came out, the naked three came out, which was all the blush tones and people were kind of coming in for that, but not with the craze they do now for eyeshadow palettes. And when they were, we at the time were so desperately trying to steer them to Anastasia. We were like, no, look like, and we'd bring them to the modern Renaissance palette and they were apprehensive because it was kind of the first of its kind. It was There different. was like a pink and a red yes. and a burnt red kind yes. of. So they, they were like, oh, I'm not going to use that orange. I won't use that pink. I won't use this. But I'm like, 
swatch these colors and the colors like that top row. I said, swatch all of these and tell me these aren't the exact things that you want in the Naked 3, but pigmented. And variety and they blend better and the quality is better. Everything about it. Yeah. Yeah. The it packaging was, in, was oh. better. And it was after that modern renaissance. And then when it caught on every launch after the modern renaissance, the soft glam. Subculture. Well, subculture, was, which that, well, that's when it kind of started to get, the bike started to wiggle. Yeah. But what was the one Norvina that was- Norvina was the purple. Norvina. What was the one that was the collab with uh, Mario? It was like greens and golds. It was. I still have that. I yeah. kept it as like a collector's piece, and it was the makeup by Mario palette that they did, and there was a lot of shimmer. But I forget more, the name of it. Yeah, it was just makeup by Mario. Oh, okay. And it was like, and then they also did like there was that one member with like the purple shimmer and the lime like chartreuse mm -hmm. green. Oh my! And it was matte, and it was very yeah. like they would come out with these palettes and like that felt packaging. I still have all of them at I home. I know. Maybe we'll do like a. Like a unearthing throwback. our old old because I have I have like every even the amp. Do you remember the first Anastasia the uh, Tamara? Yes, is that her name? Yes, I think so. I still have that. That's wild. We should do like we'll a, call it like a makeup graveyard. Like oh, under yeah. all the Burberry I have, it's like, like a makeup museum that is like it's almost like Aaron Parsons like. Girl, level I of, am like, salivating. Okay, so I don't know if you know this. Erin Parsons, you have to follow her on everything. She is a fucking goddess. But uh, we had her on the pod. Um, she was like episode three. But anywho, she's making and creating a makeup museum in New mm -hmm. York City. I am foaming at the goddamn mouth. I can't wait for to this go. makeup museum to open. Like yeah. I'm dying. I to, would love to go. I know, dying. So, but yeah. So I feel like Anastasia started the eyeshadow palette revolution. I agree with you. I feel like Morphe at the time it was harder to sell people on. Morphe because it was online only. But I agree with you that Morphe, yeah. in my opinion, started the makeup e-commerce revolution. Yes. Morphe and Makeup Geek, rest in peace, which I we know. now know Makeup yeah. Geek deserved all the credit, but maybe that's a different episode. But we, um, yes, Morphe started the e-commerce e thing. But yeah. I will say in store or available for purchase, Anastasia was the brand we were steering people. They kind of put people getting addicted to buying eyeshadow palettes on the map. Yeah, because it was so, you wanted to collect them all because mm -hmm. they all did something different, mm -hmm. which I did. I Every time they came out with a palette, I didn't, it, it became almost like a Pokemon trading cards. Like I started to want to collect them all and I started to get obsessive because I saw the new palette get posted on Trend Mood back mm -hmm. in the day. And I said, I don't even need to swatch this. I don't even need, I know I already want it. Exactly. I know the formula. It's trusted. I know it's going to be great. Yes. And that's when, when subculture was kind of getting that like squeaky wheel. It was like, yes. oh God, they're about to go downhill. But then yep. they saved themselves, with discontinued. And then- In my opinion, when they came out with subculture, because you're right, it was Anastasia had the ability to blindly make it make an eyeshadow palette and you would blindly buy it because you knew the quality then when the subculture eyeshadow palette happened which basically the issue with that one was was people were reviewing it and trying it and there was something different about the formula that colors weren't blending and when you tried to layer colors it turned a different color like if you layered a a transition color with the blue, it turned a dark brown. Like it was like um, something was really spooky. But what I feel like saved them at that time was because before that, their complexion products were boo-boo. Remember those foundation sticks? Oh my God. Yeah, girl. That's all they had in the complexion. And then when subculture kind of started to make everyone and the question- the pots. Girl, the eyeshadow formulas, that's when they started coming out with complexion products that were like the Luminous Foundation and the whole nine yard, mm. a little, like maybe a couple months after that, that then their complexion products were breathtaking when they started coming out with that foundation and so on and so forth. But that being said, why do you feel like they're in their flop era? So I feel like now coming to a point where to me, it started with Norvina. So Norvina is the daughter of Anastasia Soar, who yeah. owns Operates Anastasia. and who did Brows. Yeah. And it started off where now there was like a subdivision of Anastasia where it was Norvina Cosmetics, where mm -hmm. it was those big Norvina palettes, palettes that it was like the giant pressed pigment palettes that were all bright colors. To me, it was such a cry for help because yeah. – it was, how do we keep Anastasia luxury and yeah. almost show this fun side of Anastasia, but like, let's not put Anastasia's name on it. Okay, girl, but I'm going to get pissed because this is my issue with all of this fucking branding when it comes to this world, fashion and beauty. And to me, it's very rooted in that classist, very highbrow, whatever, anything colorful or fun or outside what Emily Gilmore 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, the idea of that woman would buy at a Bloomingdale's is, clown. is not luxury. Yeah, because it's clown makeup. Yeah. And it really made me mad, too, especially with Norvina, because it, it almost felt like it was the, the stepchild that... It was the Cinderella, like, you're going to be put... Because they didn't... It wasn't on the Anastasia gondola, no. ever. It was always on a separate end cap mm-hmm. in Sephora, away from Anastasia. Yes. Like, they separated it too much, where yes. Norvina should have been on the end cap right at Anastasia. Yes. Where it was still connected, like, okay, it's right around the corner, we have these other offerings, because I get it, like, on the, like there's only so much space where you could fit these things. Yes. But it, it was such a separate thought that it didn't even say Anastasia anywhere on the packaging, yeah. but it was still manufactured by that brand, but it was technically, numbers-wise, looking at the listings of, like, what the brands were making for a day, it was separate brands, even. Wow. Norvina was considered a separate brand, so there was a separation of, like, church and state, if you will. Which, also, do you think there was an aspect of it that was, like, she she was, like, you know, I, I want my own identity away from mommy? I think so. There I was think- that, which, that always baffles me, to a certain degree. I get it, but, like... She gave you what you have, and now Girl, she's still like the, I guess, the creative director, if you want to call it. That's what I'm saying. Who cares? So like, like, you get to take it in your own direction. The because everything about like even like the single shadows when they had those, yeah. it was always Norvina as like the product developer of yeah. like what we're doing. The artistry behind it was always her direction. So I'm like, yeah. where did you think that you need to? You needed to and like if get I this weird inherited a makeup brand. <laughs> now there are palettes that are coming out because there was something even different when they launched that. I think it was called the Primrose palette with mm-hmm. those two quote unquote blush shades. It was like a peach and then a dark peach and then eyeshadows that were quote unquote pressed pigments, big pans of it. So we're getting away from the format of modern Renaissance soft glam, all of those smaller pan eyeshadow palettes, mm-hmm. which if it's not broke, don't fix it. Girl, tell me about it. Because I love the I offerings know. that they were giving us. And if they kept coming out with those, imagine like an all matte, like a Patrick Ta volume three, an all matte, like Anastasia. Tell me about it. Stunning. I know. So when we started coming out with those, it became very tired and yeah. boring because the color stories were not making sense anymore. Yeah. It seemed like they were trying to reinvent the wheel of what they already were doing so successfully of like, yeah. we have this eyeshadow palette formula. We're taking this eyeshadow formula that was amazing, and now all of a sudden we're going to switch it to pressed pigments because yes. all of a sudden that's what was working. The and, thing. Yeah. But no, no, because Norvina palettes were all pressed pigments basically, and they were only intended for face and body after the whole Huda Beauty thing. That ever, there was lawsuits and all of that. Which let me say too, like, listen, like every now and again, yeah, like I like I like a pressed pigment, especially because my I'm addicted to like – pinks and purples on my eyes when I do eyeshadow, like even the Trixie, yeah. the new Trixie palette. But girl, I don't want my eyelid stained for three days. Like, I don't want, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, and, and that's me, let alone a regular consumer. And no tea though, these palettes that are coming out that are pressed pigments, they are ugly. Tell me about it. the ugliest color stories I've ever seen, like the rose metal, and now all of these ones, the cosmic one, the Every palette that they're putting out are these bigger pan eyeshadows, and they are boring. I know. They are disgusting color stories, and I don't know where they went wrong because they had such an amazing, amazing handle on the beauty community of, like, what consumers wanted for so long that now when we're reformulating the glosses and liquid lips were starting to die out, which is, you know, trends come and go, even the lipsticks that got relaunched, I'm like – are, are we not realizing where is the pulse? Like, and I never understood because are peachy nudes like the new thing? Because who is buying them? Because they are all orange lipsticks. Girl. They're, every nude is orange. And I'm like, I, know. I don't understand where you think this is okay. Is it because you have so much lip filler that your lips are turning blue and purple and you need the orange and the lipstick <laughs> color to corrector. color correct it? <laughs> yeah. I did. So that it's nude. That. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm just so like. But I'm not like I just don't understand where we have no pulse on what consumers want to purchase anymore. And you have the people that I still like, oh, I love Anastasia Brow Wiz. And I'm like, really? I know. Really? Like, there's so many other better things out there that don't tear out your brows when you use it. Or break off. Snapping off. Girl. <laughs> Yeah. The amount of fucking times when we worked at Sephora, I used to have to put the pencil back in, <laughs> back in the holder, and twist it up gently, and because go, oh, it oh, broke oh, off oh, oh. at the fucking root. Yeah, and, and it would just slide out. Yeah. yeah, I was sitting here for a second, like, and 
it's because the wine's hitting. I was sitting here like genuinely getting like turned on slash like emotional thinking about what kind of an eyeshadow palette you and I would create. Oh, but I almost mean, in like a manifesting sense of like, I know it's going to happen one day. And I'm th- I was thinking about the mad scientist level of like trying every single one, the formula, the colors, the, because I've always dreamed about doing. And when I fucking tell you an all in one palette, I want one palette that has every transition and nude and matte white and matte bone and matte black for any neutral glam I ever wanted, plus every colorful anything, everything, so on and so forth I've ever wanted in my life. And I was just thinking about that process like I can't even imagine. Yeah, because it, it takes me back to even the series that, I mean, I hate to even bring this up, but the Jeffree Star, Shane Dawson, when they were doing their palette, watching those videos. Did you ever watch that series? Yes. And I mean, the makeup community was really, I mean, that palette, watching them formulate it, like I could see us to a level of doing something that, that's how involved I'm going to get because that's how serious I take this. That makeup is my, truly like when I discovered makeup, there was something that ignited in my soul that I was like, I know this is where Agreed. I belong and I know I could do this. Absolutely. And formulating something with you, I could see it just like our whole vision of opening up a palette <sighs> and just like it just being our perfect girl because palette. nobody is more critical than us. And uh, that's the, and uh, listen, right. that is a positive in some regards because yeah. I can't even imagine the scrutiny and the, the, there would be no stone left. You would want for nothing. Like we would have the people in the makeup lab crawling out. Like it was a zombie apocalypse, like help. And I would drag them back in by their <laughs> yeah. feet. They, you yeah. would just see them outside, like a shot and down a hallway. My grizzled the gray door. hand <laughs> would come back out and drag them. <laughs> On a My record claws, player, yeah, dragging them yeah. back into the lab. Yeah, yeah. The eyeshadow smoke comes out of the doors, and we're dragging them back, and they're like clawing yeah. their yeah. way. And I'm like, it's not shimmery. Yeah. yeah, I'm like more pal. <laughs> Yeah, pinker. Yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, <laughs> totally. You, you have the lipstick smeared like the one <laughs> totally, episode. You're yeah. like, come to mama. No, wait, listen in. Yeah, <laughs> listen. Yeah, totally. Like, it, I can't imagine. So, but no, I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, where Anastasia really is losing that. I know level because they really had such a beautiful handle on everything, and then it's you have something so amazing. Where did it go wrong I that know. the creative control just clearly you just slipped? Because and here's yeah. my thing too. And I think this goes for a lot of the brands on these lists. You get too comfortable being that bitch that you think (laughs) we could do anything we want and people will love it. Mm -hmm. And you're getting gaslit by your whole team that like, it's amazing. Wow. Isn't that nice? Aren't you having fun? Yes. yes. No, mama. You need to have the the blind studies of consumers being like, this is horrible. I'm and not having fun tonight. <laughs> Speaking of another one that that's the problem. Yeah. But Joanne, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We want a stripped down version of Gaga from the documentary and she takes off her bra and she's sitting there naked and her team is Girl, like, yeah, we love that. Tea. I, so when I went back to college, when I was older, I was in my dorm and Kevin came over and we watched the five foot two documentary together. And there's a part of the Gaga documentary where she, her, she looks at her team and she goes, do you think people are going to miss the, the fashion theatrics? The, yeah. The, yeah. The fashion and the whatever. And her team, I mean, literally hooked a fucking tube up to their lips down and up to her asshole. And we're like, no, not at all. Oh my God. They're going to love what you do no matter what. what. And, but before they even did that, when she was like, do you think people are going to miss it? You and I, as we do now, we're watching it. Looked at, Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bitch. Yeah. Like, do you think? And because we knew at the time, because Joanne had already come out, yes. the album already came out. So we knew because, and the Super Bowl had already happened as well. Mm-hmm. So this was like a behind the scenes of like making the album, the Super Bowl performance, getting ready for all of that. And, and I had all a of million that happening. reasons to be pissed. I had a million reasons to let her go. (laughs) Totally. And I just needed one good one to stay. (laughs) Yeah. And I haven't gotten it. (laughs) And I'm still waiting. (laughs) Yeah. um, For the Chromatica Ball film. Totally. Let's dive right into this next one. Girl. Fenty Beauty. Fenty Beauty. And this may be controversial, but I don't think it is anymore because I I think even people that love Fenty are like, what happened? Honestly, to me, this is a... 
case of we burned out as quickly. You know that saying, like the the like a relationship, the quicker you burn, like the faster you're going to burn out. Yeah. It was almost that in the sense that to me- The flames the, were so high on the candle, girl, that yeah, it burned Yeah, it burned out yeah. just as quickly because yeah. to me, the identity of Fenty is other than the cream blushes and bronzers, all the complexion products are questionable. We have yet to come out with a foundation that is spectacular. We have yet to come out with a concealer. We have yet to come out with a powder bronzer. And I like those powder bronzers, but I do think we have to- we got to build them up to get some pigment in those powder bronzers. She doesn't even have powder blush. Has never come out with it, which like, oh. what are we doing? Lip liner. Lip liner. Setting powders. Right? Yeah, they're not Nothing. Good. Uh, the powder There's, foundation. None of them are great. Not great. The complexion is so lacking, which to me, in the beginning, it was very exciting because of the inclusivity and the edginess yeah. in something that was exactly had that luxury. She was she was doing what Anastasia was afraid to do, was to yeah. play with color in the whole nine yards. But then we, to date, are we just a brand that sells lip products? Because at this point, Fenty Beauty is lip wear gloss. a lip gloss and lipstick brand. And let me argue right now. When go we ahead. first came out, because I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go. Yeah, no, I knew you were forming your thought, but it was a good pause. <clears throat> and I'm yeah. going to go. Yeah. Um, when Fenty Beauty first came out with the Mademoiselle lipsticks, the skinny lipsticks that were a range of colors from like Candy Venom that was the hot pink. And then we had the green and the blue and the black lipstick and yeah. everything. There was yeah. this edginess to it. And it felt new and it was amazing. And those lipsticks, I mean, saucy, that like yellow-based orange. Yeah. That was neon. Yeah. And Ballerina Blackout. Girl. Gosh, the That hot baby pink was like, <laughs> yeah. oh my God. Like there was something yeah. so great about it. And there was a an amazing feeling behind it because it was something that really like felt like it was Fenty Beauty. That was to the core of like the packaging, Absolutely. the colors. I was like, this is amazing. To discontinue that whole line to come out with neutrals and red and then brick colors in between, mm -hmm. you're losing your brand identity from where you started. You're coming out with things that were putting you on the map to then say, that was a joke. We're doing this instead. Where are you going at this point? Because you started off going, we're different. Here we are. We're, yes. we're going to be groundbreaking. We're going to come out with glosses that'll be more universal. We're coming out with a red that's universal. We're yes. going to do all this. We're going to expand. But now, now all of a sudden, we're going to take those hero products. And even when she had the hydrating foundation in the pump, that yeah. was like that mesh, like yep. that squeezy tube. Amazing hydrating found i still get people to this day saying like oh my god do you remember that and i was like oh yeah like i do that was such a great foundation and that boo boo matte foundation it was Girl. selling out like nobody's business and now crickets crickets <laughs> mama crickets. Yeah. everything is so dry and so lackluster yes and i remember i was so excited for that matte foundation to come out because somebody from Kendo, who was under the mm -hmm. umbrella company, was like, yeah, it's very similar to double wear. And I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Wow. Like it's going to be $35. Yeah. It's going to be great. It's more affordable than double wear. That's so exciting. Girl. When I put that on my skin and it dried down so fast, got so dark. It sucked. And then I literally <laughs> was like scratching it off. I my was like, body went from 75% water to 25% water. I it, said, oh girl. SpongeBob SquarePants. Out in the okay, open. Yeah. I need it. I need water. Yeah. Yeah. water. Totally. I'm like screaming. And also, this is something else that just popped in my head is, okay. And I know for the last, at this point, 37 years, we've all joked around about like, where's the album? But let's get something straight. At the end of the day, same with Selena, same with Gaga. You have a makeup brand because you are Rihanna the singer. If you quite literally disappear from the medium that afforded you the possibility and money to create a beauty brand, there is no longer an identity to synonymously infuse mm -hmm. with the products. Yeah. Selena Gomez is still active in her career. Gaga is active in her career. So the brand, people are buying that brand for the identity of the celebrity, of Gaga, of Selena. Rihanna's brand is 10 years old. And that's our qualm personally with our problem with celebrity brands is 
they get a head start because they get to start a brand with their already developed identity. And with a following from their musical career or acting career or whatever career they have from their fame and notoriety because you're not starting this beauty brand because you're a makeup connoisseur and you're like, I know what I'm doing, like a Kevin Aquan. I start, my career is based on makeup. No, you're getting a makeup brand and a makeup career because you're famous. Exactly. And because you have a following. Yes. And as much as we rip it to shreds, a Laura Mercier. Laura Mercier needed to start her brand, no one knew who she fucking was. I still don't know who she <laughs> is. <laughs> totally. I didn't even know she was a real person until two years ago. She was a makeup artist. I yeah. thought it was a made up name. <laughs> but point in case. So here you have someone that gets to swoop in with all of this notoriety and success. Yeah. So, you know, as much as we joke about like, where's yeah. the next album? Stop coming out with makeup. But like, no, really, no. girl. What like, because this is indicative of your makeup brand is selling to a degree based on your celebrity slash singer identity. But let's hello, Super Bowl. Yes. It was a Fenty Beauty commercial because she pulls out the Invisimap powder that came and out she nine starts, years ago and starts touching and up not with it. Good. Yeah. Starts like, touching up with it. And then also, too, they, you know, they put the details of what she was wearing that night with the red lip. And then it was the icon velvets that mm-hmm. just came out. So she was wearing one of those. And because I even know. they made the joke of at the Super Bowl, they were good, just going to wheel out the Fenty Beauty gondola and say, <laughs> come shop. <laughs> that that yes. was going to be the Super Bowl I know. halftime I know. show. And that's where I'm, it, it is making me crazy because. I know. When Fenty Beauty first came out, and I remember, you know, being at Sephora and working there, I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, this is going to be great. Came out with it. I was like, wow, you know, this is really exciting that this is, this feels like Rihanna because she's doing something exciting. And then when the lips came out, the Mademoiselle lipsticks, and it was all bright colors. And then the icon lips. Oh my God. With the interchangeable in that pop packaging. And yeah, it was but just. Have more, but have colors. Exactly. Not the nudes and the browns and the reds because that was boo boo to discontinue the Mademoiselles and coming out with the icon pop. I know. Like, and then the twistable, refillable. I and love they did that so idea. Well, but then we didn't expand the, the shade range. And then when we did expand the shade range, it was more browns, reds, <laughs> nudes. So what totally. are we doing that we I have know. no breath of product anymore? I know. I know. And it's all mass consumer. But what's now you can get sell? a purple case. And a black case. And a red case. And, a red and, a, case. and then the one for the holidays that was green, blue, and purple case. All three colors in one. The, every part was a different color. The Frankenstein of cases. The Frankenstein Christmas. Frankenweenie <laughs> over here. <laughs> Frankenweenie! <laughs> oh yeah. my God. Like, yeah. I cannot deal. And that's what makes me crazy is that I felt I like Rihanna <laughs> felt so involved at first, which I'm sure LVMH had a huge, you know, yeah. swing in it. But, like, yeah. it felt like the Fenty Beauty team stopped caring about it. It was like, oh, we anything we do because we're so yeah. successful because they became, at the time, they were like the number one makeup brand in Sephora. Totally. When they first launched. And now all of a sudden it's like, do you just not care anymore? I because know. you had, you had hit after hit products, especially the pink highlighter that went viral. Oh, and the, I, I mean, Trophy Wife, the gold highlighter. Like you had all these products that were so cool and not done before. And then here you are just like, oh, let's come out with whatever. and Coasting. It, it is, yeah, because you are coasting. You're yeah. you're discontinuing the cream blushes in that hot pink and the purple that was different. And you and now backed by popular demand because people have to ask for it. I that know. was a killer product for you. And then you discontinued it for what reason? Because you were What no, was the reason? <laughs> because you had no finger yeah. on the pulse. Yeah, you because don't even know why. You're letting, you're, successful. you're quite literally letting LVMH yes. dictate what products are going to be on your gondola I know. when you sh- as Fenty Beauty and Rihanna should put your foot down and say, no, I want to be different. I want to have these products because guess what? Walk into a Sephora. If you could try and go find anything different, like yeah. a purple blush, good luck. I know. Because no brands will ever let that happen anymore because I feel like Sephora has too much of a chokehold on these brands. Let's Absolutely. call it what it is. I know. There's I know. no breath of products because I feel like they want what will sell to the masses. That's all they want. Yes. And I'm also, and maybe this is, I'm going to admit this because of the wine. So maybe we'll cut this in post. Probably not. I don't know. I have a little bit of a personal disappointment, I will say, in Fenty Beauty because when I blew up on social media, one of my first big, big brand deals was Fenty Beauty. They were my first brand deals that I was like, holy shit, like I can do this full time. A lot of times you think about brands in the macro sense. Fenty Beauty did something good. So all of Fenty Beauty is good. No, no, mama. The woman that worked at Fenty Beauty, this singular woman had the vision and foresight to reach out to me and say, why is no fucking brand 
infusing advertising in your comedy skits. And I was like, thank you. I've been thinking that for a year. So my first branded comedy skit and three after that was were the with lipsticks, Fenty Beauty. Right? Yeah, it was with the Icon Lipsticks. I did a skit with the Poutsicle Lip Stains. And the Sun Kiss Palette. The Sun Kiss Palette, which I love that, my bridal kit. You talk bronzers and eyeshadows in one. At the time, I was so not only proud personally that here I was getting brand deals for the first time, but I loved Fenty Beauty because it was that heyday. They were still in their prime. And the minute that specific woman left Fenty Beauty, not one person is, we're going on at this point, almost a year and a half, not one person from Fenty Beauty has spoken to me. So for me, it was always just like, okay, I felt so validated at the time where I was like, Fenty Beauty is reaching out to me. And then when the woman that was really my point of contact uh, had left, it was like, oh, it wasn't Fenty. It was, it was her. her. Yeah. And to have seen what those videos produced and sold. I mean, I when I spoke to this woman, I remember with the icon collab, I had worn cuz I uh, you and I've said it to you before. I like a porn star nude or I go vamp deep. Yes. Like that's my yeah. tea. What I was wearing in the uh last episode of the year, the yeah. or the yeah. Yeah. Which was fucking Fenty, the icon. <laughs> oh, it was. Yes, yes. it was. And it then was, it was the gloss on top too, yes. the fuchsia flex gloss. Yes, you're yeah. welcome. Was that was yeah. uh, whatever I was wearing in that comedy skit? The icon lips were out for three weeks after my skit, and my skit went live the day those launched. The lipstick I was wearing, my TikTok comments was, "What lip are you wearing? What is that color? What is that color? What is that color?" Follow up with her. What was the first shade? to sell out that after she left the company Fenty never spoke to me again because they think it's just going to sell itself. So that's what I'm saying. It, it's just, it's sad. a lack of relationship building yeah. and having your finger <laughs> on the pulse of what's going on and who is supporting you and why, what products your consumers care about. What are you doing? Quite literally. I think that's right now why I think they're in their flop era. Going back mm -hmm. to this whole point is that by not investing in the people that have helped you since day one or since product launches and the, the, the birth of these products, you're quite Literally telling these people what you did was fine, but it'll sell itself. We'll figure out a new way to do it. Yes. And there's there's this like collective, like everybody, it's like SpongeBob running around in his own head with the 50 different people running around. Yes. Filing cabinets going all around, <laughs> yeah. papers going everywhere, flying left and right. And you don't know what to do anymore because I think now they're trying to play catch up because I, I think they're realizing that their products aren't selling like no. they used to. Because when Fenty would drop something, you know it was selling out left and right. Girl. When it was first launching, yes, sold out for months. I know, and it took forever to get products back in, yes. like a rare beauty now. Yes, it's like heartbreaking seeing a Fenty Beauty gondola when you walk up to it. And Girl, it's just looking, you took the. <laughs> it's like oh, walking you. up, and it's like it's I, like oh, looking I side at eye it, and I go, "Is there anything?" No. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> every time. I and just it's did it yesterday. Tumbleweeds. And it's like the Western, like the saloon doors are just like opening and closing in front of it. And I'm like, oh. oh. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> are the spirits here now with us? Yes. Ghost town, Western I village, know. honey. Saloon doors, <sighs> bang, bang. I he want. He shot me down, <sighs> bang, bang. Hey. Gaga with no mic. Yeah. Black curly wig with the red leather jacket. Imagine how tired we are. <laughs> Can we also talk about really really quickly yeah. how on the the album cover for cheek to cheek that that didn't look like her photo shop no <laughs> no I'm, you know what it was i no. don't think it was photoshop they did a weird filter like almost like a cartoon Ghoul. filter like a newspaper it was, filter it was ghoulin over her that it was, was suspect it was ghouls and goblins my sister took this photo because I wasn't available. Absolutely. For the photo shoot. Yes. This was given. Natalie. Natalie Germanata was available for the shoot. I'm I was not. Girl. This is like Britney Spears was like when she was missing. They were like, it's her sister with a Snapchat filter. It was Natalie Germanata. I can't even think about that. I know. 
No, you know what? I don't even care if this episode's two hours because I'm having so much fun talking about <laughs> what, like, I love intellectually deep diving like this. Are we back? We're back. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I just decided we're back. We're back. Um, next brand girl is um, Liza I, with the Z. Yeah. yeah. What is uh, Pat McGrath? Oh God, do we even? Uh, because you know what it was. God, it was a short heyday. I'm gonna bring it all the way back, Mama. Yeah. yeah. To Pat McGrath, early days. Yes. Limited. Everything was limited edition. Absolutely. Everything was in those packaging clear with the sequins in the bottom. Mm-hmm. That's when Pat McGrath it was felt elite. It felt elite, rich, but, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I had a very, very whole, I had a <laughs> whole. very whole <laughs> yeah. bone, bone, wig, wig. Yeah. I had a very big problem at the time with those limited edition um, releases and very limited releases of her products because when I got one of them in the mail, I got, remember when she did the, um, the cream highlight and then the powder highlight that was domed, like baked yes. and it came with a brush. Yes. I had a very big problem because I ordered the pink and the gold. Hi. <laughs> Tootsie Hi. Footies. Hello. Oh, Tootsie Footies. I We're got having the- weather. Weather. <laughs> I said, we learned so much about colors. <laughs> I'm learning a lot about color today. Yeah, color. <laughs> and I got the gold in the mail. Yeah. And I undid it, you know, pour the sequins out. It was the whole the rigmarole of mm-hmm. like getting everything. Cleaning up the sequins, the, vacuuming the, the sequins I would like <laughs> pop it open and the sequins would pop everywhere. And yeah. I'm like, oh, you fuck face. Yeah. And... The brush. Yes. It was a stippling brush, very like loose stippling brush to mm-hmm. apply highlighter. Okay. And I was like, okay, this is a little weird. Mm-hmm. And then I I felt kind of shafted by Pat McGrath because I pulled that brush out, was not embossed with Pat McGrath, plain black brush, no writing, light as a feather, and there was a sticker on it that said like Pat Made McGrath. In. Oh. <laughs> and I mean, then yeah. I peeled the sticker off mm-hmm. and it was just a plain black brush. And I was like, Ugh. and it felt very lightweight. And it, the collection, the kit was $65. Yes. So for me to pay for a, a highlighter, that was a quite Sacagawea literally- Sacagawea coin. Yeah, the a size Sacagawea of a coin. silver dollar. Yeah. And then I, I think that it was like a cream version of it as well, like yeah. a stick. And then it was the brush. And yeah. for $65, I'm thinking to myself, it felt luxurious getting it. But then I was like looking at it and swatching the formula. I was like, this is really horrible. It didn't pay off. And yeah. then she, when she was doing those limited edition eyeshadows, like the dark star with the blue shadow and everything. Yes. And I remember buying the, it was the four and I'll never forget it. It was like the metal tones and it was like the silver, the copper, gold, and bronze. Yes. You got a cream and then a powder again, domed in cream yes. pot version. And there was something about it again, where I swatched all of them. I still have them to this day in my house because oh. it, it felt like it was the last time Pat McGrath did something noteworthy where I felt them in there. I, it was nice, but it wasn't nice enough. <laughs> For the price that I paid. Yes. Because I think it was $125. True. 125 for eight products, you know, full size. I know. But it was not – the formula and the packaging and everything was not worth it. Yeah. Then, you know, fast forward to we're getting Mothership palettes. Yes. That were 125 at the time. Now they're like 128 Yeah. I know. Mama, and- boo boo the house down, girl. Cool. The last Mothership palette. What Actually, are we on Mothership Eleven now? Difficult for me to differentiate what the difference <coughs> between Mothership Eleven and Ten. Nine, Ten, Eleven. Because I swear, like I, I pink, don't even know which one we're on. Pink and gold. Like and it was. What's happening? I got so excited because there was one of the Mothership palettes that came in like the unit cart and was like rainbow. It was like a rainbow dream when you open it up. Boo boo mats for the mm-hmm. first eight shades, and then shades nine and ten were blinding. <laughs> Beautiful. I know. Give me a palette, like Adjust because I said that. this. We've Danessa said Myricks, Light yes. Work Five, was giving me Pat McGrath vibes of those creamy, beautiful shimmers and I know. high shine, like glam shadows oh, for one twenty-five. Pat McGrath palettes. You're getting the same boring, dusty rose, b- cocoa brown with a gray base to it. That Which we're again, doing where nothing. is the fucking foresight to say why are you as Pat McGrath not selling your fucking eyeshadows individually? So I can make my own. <laughs> I'll put it in yeah. a nine ninety nine Z palette. I want all of. The, I want my book. I want <laughs> my book. <laughs> the holographic. Those shadows yes. individually. Yep. I don't care if they're twenty dollars each. Overcharge me. You overcharge me for the five fucking motherships I bought, which yeah. I've used once. But I just look at them as like collectors' items. They are. It's just a. It's a vanity piece. It's what are you doing? Sell them individually. Like there's just. No- Do you remember when she had single shadows too? 
Oh, yeah, The single shadows. And I was like, oh my God, we're going to get them finally. And then they were boo-boo shimmers. Yeah. It was gold, blue, black, It's nude, what she's putting in brown. her stickered cardboard now palettes that are ending up in TJ Maxx. Yeah. Her and fucking I'm makeup sorry. is in TJ Maxx. The fact, yeah, you know. That's appalling. I saw Pat McGrath makeup in TJ Maxx for the first time, and it was the Bridgerton collection. Same. I literally and I bought it. And yeah, but still. I because did too. yeah, because I was just nude like romantic what? was lit. <laughs> yes. Um, and I bought that lipstick and I was like, wow. I was like, Pat McGrath. I was like, in TJ Maxx. I was shocked. I was like, that I was is shocked. A- I was in tears almost. <laughs> <laughs> it's a sign of like, girl, is your brand all right? How's she doing? I know. And now it's written on the walls that like even getting the new pulled, collection getting is- pulled out of Sephora. Pat McGrath is out of most of the locations that I've now gone into because they make room for new brands that are actually doing well. But now notice that since Pat McGrath went to Ulta, it's in a lot more Ultas. And tell me why the displays in Ulta are stunning. (laughs) And Ultas are, mm, sorry, no offense, not luxurious. And they have a beautiful display of Pat McGrath and it is stunning. Where Sephora was getting like this boo-boo display that was like never updated. Okay. I'm going to say something and I don't know if this is true. So this is alleged. Okay. I will say this. I feel like Sephora has a bigger hand in dictating what a brand is allowed to design for their gondola where Ulta maybe gives people more creative freedom because the Natasha Denona gondola at Ulta compared to Sephora, the Natasha Denona palettes always on an end cap, by the way, at Sephora might as well be in a trash can compared to Ulta Got Natasha Denona. You talk about rolling out the red carpet. Mirrored gondolas. Re- lights. Camera. Action. Like reflection. Look at half like, magic. Girl. With the actual light so you could see so the I'm glitter. sorry. That's why to me I feel like with that, it's same with Sephora is a little too big for its britches. Where yeah. they think they're like, you're coming in our store. We fucking tell you. You get to use the same fucking shells everybody else uses. And make sure your stickers are fucking updated. That's Sephora. They don't and let they, anybody have creative yeah. freedom where Ulta lets people customize their gondolas. And it's yeah. more of an exciting experience. Yeah. Because the, the shelf, like when- The they Chanel up- gondola in Ulta's? Oh. Girl, mama, they let them build the house. <laughs> and get it's a the wall. pull-out drawers yes. of like where your pro- you get the product and yes. everything. And it's so beautiful. Where, yeah, like- I'm not quite sure. And again, going back to the flop era of Pat McGrath is that I feel like the products too that she was releasing, the concealer, garbage. That foundation. Garbage. Garbage. Yes. Those under eye setting powders, I was so excited for them. I know. Garbage. Garbage. I know. And I mean the highlighters, the creams. The creams. (laughs) Yeah. And those powder blushes could have been so, so perfect and beautiful. But like, what are we doing? Those powder blushes, I bought both. Of those last year's blush palettes with mm-hmm. the four. Mama, when I tell you I gotta get my hard hat on, <laughs> go down the mine shaft, and fucking dig, dig, diggity dig, dig you, to get any pigment. Chiseling away in the cave trying to get pigment off the wall. And build yeah. it up. I can't I don't know tell what you. we're doing because Pat McGrath really, like, for that price point too, it should be coming off finger swipe and full pigment. And not too powdery. No. Because but her enough. blushes were pigmented enough at first, you know and now what I'm they're wearing for the first time. What house, house labs. labs? I have a little bit of the uh, I don't know what Pamela color. Peach. Fuck it was you. the only one open on the desk when I did my makeup, so I knew what you were wearing. Investigator, <laughs> dun dun, Megan, <laughs> the perfect. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Is that what you know it's gonna do? <laughs> yeah. 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 Wait till you try the the other colors too from House Labs, which is oh, why girl. I'm hoping that they are gonna be brought back permanently. <laughs> um <laughs> subscribe to my beauty channel because Kevin and I were taking it over. I told you this already. I bought because of this motherfucker. Let me tell you this, everybody, right now. Oh, oh, oh it's yeah. not just you that are influenced by us <laughs> slash Kevin. You really were the one that spearheaded, I shall say, the House Labs powder blushes getting mm-hmm. our best of the year award. Listening to this motherfucker talk, I, I know. Went to houselabs.com and spent $300 oh on God. because they don't have it on Sephora.com. No. And I know they're limited edition. So I, because of you editing, went to houselabs.com, bought 
all, every single blush but one. Because the a, one blush is not I, the it, it's just hibiscus too dark haze. for me. Yeah, it's no, more for no. You bought the acai berry. The hibiscus haze is unavailable, but the hibiscus one is like the one that's not available. It's like gone everywhere. Oh, okay. Well, for, but yeah. you did buy the darkest one because you can make it work, I Mama. You saw mama, the swatches. I well, a exactly doing this as long as we do. I we know how to make like a red, but they a burgundy blush work on pasty but they've skin. Shown every blush on. I told you this in the episode. You could you, they show every blush on every skin tone how to make it work. Yes, thank you. And yep. same, it was even with the Yuma Beauty blushes. I yes, loved. I yes. kept that burgundy because we know how to. And I make kept oh, uh, Mama, that fucking burgundy. I was just thinking of it with a fucking red. I look bringing that. Mm. I was turned on. So I bought every blush but one, a bronzer and the limited edition holiday lip shaker set because I fucking needed that. Because you're a Christmas baddie. <laughs> Get out of my house. I bought that because I needed that thing. 300 plus dollars because of you. Oh and my God. I sent you the risk. I literally sent a screenshot of the confirmation. Of like the- I was like, this is your fault. And because you know how, I was oh, watching you talk about Do you know how many him. times you've influenced me over the years? Now this is just a little bit of payback. Not to get you life together. <laughs> For, read my I, way! He read, you read my way! Have I really? Yes. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? Even before we started doing this podcast, I was like, you were like selling me yeah. on shit that I was like, uh, I don't need this. And I would yeah. always buy things because you and I'm like, you fucking But stupid. let's be real. How the easiness to influence me versus you to buy makeup is... Apples and oranges. What do you mean? You will buy makeup if you hear it may be released in Idaho, where I have to be in a committed relationship. <laughs> this is the person last season that told us he had a hundred and he gave away a hundred and seventy-seven eyeshadow palettes. So to say someone influences you is not a triumph. To influence <laughs> me with my own money. With my money is a feat. I feel red and also flattered. <laughs> Diagnosed. <laughs> I feel like I need help. Yes. And I feel like you read my way. You read my way. Yes, uh, totally. But yeah, no, those house labs Girl. blushes. I mean, talk about like pigment. I know. Girl, where were we going with that? House labs blushes compared <clears throat> to Pat McGrath. Oh, Pat McGrath. Oh, I know. Yes. So Pat McGrath, girl, you girl, got it. Listen, you are it elite. You're an icon. You got to get it together. You got to have the vision and understand why, what your brand identity is because you're losing it. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I feel like they lost it many moons ago. Many moons ago. So what's next? What are the... Uh, okay, okay, so we almost kind of coupled... These, Three brands, yes, because which very we'll much explain. the yeah. same heyday, the same era, the same yeah. feel. Oh, yeah, it oh, was girl. really all the same time when that they okay. all. <sighs> yes, yeah. when we and when they rose, in my opinion, when yes. we worked at Sephora, tell me they were not the ones sponsoring Nikki, <laughs> Manny, Jacqueline, Jackie, Ina. They were 2015 influencer YouTube sponsors, yeah. and it was. Urban Decay, Tarte, and Too Faced. Yeah. Which good for them at the time to capitalize on the social <clears throat> media wave. They understood the element of sponsoring and the brand trips and the whole nine yards. Yeah, oh, they were oh, they were making money back Girl. in the day. And do you remember All Nighter coming out with scents? Yes. They were doing like the summer solstice scent. Like oh, they no. knew how to capitalize on what their hero product was. Yes. And the eyeliners coming out with them and like they expanded that eyeliner range yes. and doing the pencil 24-7 pencils in every yes. other color because they knew what the name of the game was. They knew what the assignment was from the jump. For me, the most reputable brand in the sense of quality was always Urban Decay. Urban Decay didn't jump on the bandwagon of like the brand trips and the sponsored posts and sponsoring every fucking no, video. No, no. They weren't the virality aspect where to me, Tarte and Too Faced prostituted themselves. Well, because the eyeshadows from Too Faced were never good. The chocolate bar palette. Girl. <laughs> Even. Tartlet. The bloom and the in bloom. I never no, really same loved. Palette. Oh, okay. And then Tartlet. in bloom was the pinky. I rosy. spit on you. <laughs> the first spit of the season. Yeah. You're right, you're right, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Basically, I say that to say is like I ha- I expect more from Urban Decay. I'll put it that way. But these they're all kind of in the same category. So, yeah. yes. So, I, and I feel like it was this mediocrity when they started to get to like, especially Two-Face, and we talked about it, you know, with the, we're trying to do like kids 
themes yeah. with raunchy names. Yeah. And Urban Decay was at fault for this for a long time too because they were like under fire when they were doing like things like perversion were, and, and um even you know what and I had ooh cuz I even have a problem with Urban Decay and I I had a very yeah. a big problem with them because I felt like they were when they were doing too much too quick. Talk about burning the flame out too quick. Remember yeah. when they did 100 lipsticks? And I feel like they were trying to go viral. Girl, that fucking they, end cap. They had the end cap of 100 lipsticks. And the formula was disgusting. And, and the all liquid over the lips- fucking map. Remember the, li- was- the liquid lipsticks that got discontinued before they came out? Absolutely. And they gave us them in gratis. Remember we got the red, the hot pink with the shimmer, and the brown. 1993. <sighs> and we got them all in gratis. And we literally put them on and we were like... Do you remember you and I squatted? At that goddamn end cap of all the hundred lipsticks, there was also no rhyme or reason for where the satins were, where the shears were, where the mats were. So it was a nightmare. And it was by color. To, girl. So it was all by color, but then and it was like swatched different and finishes. Swatched all. And swatched and swatched. Didn't like one. And it, they were all like dry. Creams, dry. <laughs> dry. Mats, dry. dry. Shimmers, dry. dry. How do you fuck up a hundred lipsticks? And the category is dry. dry. I mean, they really like came in swinging with a mm-hmm. hundred lipsticks. And I was like, you and I felt like they were trying to do, hmm, yeah. we're going to come out with lipsticks, but we wanted to appeal to the masses. How do we do that? And somebody said, just come out with a hundred. Oh, yeah. And they all like, ha 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 ha. And then they were all like, not one really? sold. Not yeah. One was reviewed by a YouTuber oh, at the time. When they all started to get discontinued. I know. And I was like watching them all, the metals, all the metallic ones slowly got metallic. half price. They all went half. Oh, there was the metallic brown, the metallic disgusting. purple, disgusting, and then the, like the all the weird colors that were just weird, like, weird lips, <laughs> too weird. And yeah. they were all just getting discontinued one row after another. And then when they finally condensed it down to maybe thirty of them, got I kept know. on, and then went back to the gondola, lost the end cap. It was a cry for help in a I way because you that. were trying to, you were throwing the wet pasta at the wall and seeing what stuck. Totally. Yeah, and you were seeing, you're like, okay, let's see, let's see. What are going to be the top selling shades I and we'll know. keep those in discount. How expensive or how inexpensive I that know. costs the brand. That's where I started to lose respect for them in a way because you're saying we don't totally. know what our hero product is for lipsticks anymore or what colors we do well. So let's do everything. Yes. And we'll keep what sells. Because callback. The minute Anastasia dethroned them as the eyeshadow palette brand, they fucking panicked. Oh, they because did not know what to do. And then they were doing naked palettes. So the naked cherry, the naked heat, the naked uh, wild the electric West. palette. Oh, the that oh was before, God. but still, but yeah. still, they were doing with the mm-hmm. electric palette that was hot. Mm-hmm. That was an amazing product that they had, but again, limited edition. Foolish. Yes. They were losing sight of what made Urban Decay Urban Decay. And then even the people that were like, oh, I missed the days when Urban Decay was grungy and had that vibe. And now you're going more like, I know. oh, I want to throw a breathy eyeshadow on and go out the I door. Know. And they were like, that's not Urban Decay. Even those fucking the name liquid- of Urban Decay. Yes. And you're coming out with nude eyeshadows, naked palettes. I know. Girl. What Even are those we fucking doing? lip shakers that the the oh, like mama, that are mustard mama. nude, like did the colors like honestly, and because I love that formula and yes. that idea, but the Revlon, I'm sorry, beats it out for me all the time. So get lost. <laughs> Revlon amazing. Yes. House Labs could use some tweaking, but yes. still great. In colors and oh formula? A little bit sometimes. I feel like the yeah. dry down of them, it takes too long. Where oh, like the yeah, Revlon, yeah, yeah. I'm like, mama, mama, mama. Like Absolutely. get it together. Yes. Like, why is this twelve dollar formula beating out your twenty four dollar formula? Totally, totally. But anyway, Urban Decay just started to really lose even sight of like when they had the foundation, the naked foundation. Yes. When that got discontinued, I was like, that is such a hero product for you. Yes. And then they redid it to the naked and which still to this day, it's ten dollars right now. You took something that was not broken and decided to fix it and reformulate. I understand repackaging to be relevant, but reformulating something that doesn't need to get reformulated is foolish. Because look at All Nighter. It never smelled. No. But now all of a sudden it smells like dirty dumpster water. (laughs) And I'm like, I I don't understand what we're doing here. That It smells like I spit in a dumpster. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. 
and quite literally saying to yourself, oh, that was the old era of us. This is the new us. Totally. We don't want the new you. Girl. And yes. I'm like, is that why, because the owner, maybe the Wendy or whatever her name was, yes. that she was like the original creator of it. Yes. Is that why, like, when she stepped away, it's like, were you just Wendy over- Wendy Decay. I thought you were saying like George, George Takei. Takei. <laughs> and I, I was thought like, the same thing as it was said in was my like, head. And I was like, <sighs> not us hook and guard feet. And then Two Face and Tart to me yeah. are the Kim Kardashian, we made a <laughs> tape of makeup brands. Do you know what I mean by that? They because were the Tarte, viral after shape bullshit. Tape, after shape tape, everything yeah. was shape tape. We have shape tape concealer. We have shape tape blush. We have shape tape contour. We have shape tape primary. Shape tape setting spray. Shape tape powder. Shape tape this. Shape tape When we worked at Sephora. I'm over it. If I needed to see one more under the motherfucking C collection product, I was going to burn the store (laughs) down. Do we remember Rainforest of the Sea and the sea and the ocean? Wait, can we talk about something? Floppity, floppy, floppy, floppy. I just want to talk about something real quick. Go right ahead. What the fuck is a Rainforest of the Sea? You tell us. Chicken of the Sea? Let's ask the audience. (laughs) What is a Rainforest of the Sea? Of the Sea. Rainforest of of the the sea. Sea. Coral Reef? Okay, first of all, the rainforest, which is why it's called rainforest, is already humid and wet. So I'm in so the water. So if you're extra wet because you're in the sea. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Finding yeah. Nemo. I found him. He's right here. I found him. He's in the fucking My big forest of the sea. Jugs. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Just, it was always fubu disgusting to me. Don't look at the tech equipment with concern to me. No, I'm just like looking at we the have time this episode yeah guys <laughs> <laughs> unsubscribe <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> ah, ah, <duh>. yeah <laughs> why like because we're not that long we're at an hour and five minutes i could go on all day but this is how much Girl. i could go on all day about this because the <laughs> the round table discussions of sitting at tart i could see them in a purple room like tart purple walls and going all right we have Double Duty Beauty going to Ulta. What's the Sephora one? Rainforest. Wet. Name another wet thing. Sea. Wet. Yeah. Ocean. Rainforest of the sea. I know. Coral I reef. fucking hated all of it. And then everything was so stupid. I just like, and it all got discontinued. All of so it. What was, what all was of the it. point? What was the point? I know. You knew you were hemorrhaging money from that collection. So what was the Girl. point of investing so much time? Effort, money, bruise, batter, <laughs> bankrupt. I don't. I'm, what are people buying from Tart? <laughs> like, if you ever buy something from Tart, other than shape tape concealer, the <laughs> maracuja <laughs> gummy goopy melty <laughs> bullshit that Meredith Dukesbury is <laughs> melting on her goddamn <laughs> lips, it isn't that great. I'm gonna say it right now, right here on this podcast. If I see one more pH color changing lip product that goes blue to pink. Girl, what are they doing? Green to pink, brown to pink. Stop doing the kiki little pen, <laughs> oopy doopy, slippy slidey Mac. What is it? Squirt glosses from Mac? Girl. Which we'll get to we'll Mac. Get You're to not it. off the hook. We're at the point where, listen, we are going to die in the next 50 years. We're going to have an apocalypse. We're going to, whatever the case is, the world is crumbling. We're either going to get swallowed by the sun or we're going to get nuked. Your only influence, because we live in America, the capitalist society of the world, is your almighty dollar. Tarte Shape Tape is duped by 50 million products. Their maracuja lips were not revolutionary, and 99 brands have come out with better and the same thing. They continue to launch complexion products that do not include any people with dark skin because they don't care. I just want to know what goes through, again, like when we're developing these products that nobody seems to quote question because it's that kool-aid drinking this is great everyone's gonna i want to keep my job but again yeah uh, and it goes back to we could do whatever we want it goes back to the anastasi and the fenty conversation of like we did it so well years ago mm-hmm. that we could do whatever we want now, now and people will still love it because they trust the brand yes they trust the name of the brand so we could put out whatever and we can fling the wet pasta at the wall, whatever <laughs> yeah. sticks and people buy. We're yep. going to continue to ride that train all the way home. Hence the maracuja clicky, you know, bullshit. Yes. That 
oh, that stuck. Let's make them color changing. Let's make the shimmer ones coming out now. Like it's tired. Let it go. I know. And this goes for all, even Too Faced, the better than sex thing. Now, did you see they have naturally better than sex? It's I the know. natural version of it. I shut know. up. And the better than sex foreplay mascara, shut up. Up. What does that mean? It's like a primer, so foreplay. So it's foreplay before, before the sex. Like, Which, girl, if your mascara is as good as you've been waterboarding us with that it is for the past decade, why do I need a primer now? Yeah. Oh, because it's it like flakes Laura off. Mercier coming up with a, a blurring powder. I thought your first powder was blurring. Yeah. That's what you've been marketing it as for the past yeah, decade. Yeah. Your mascara is so good. And I'm sorry, if better than sex doesn't flake, why are you saying that this prevents it from flaking? Why do I yeah. need a primer now? Yeah. Because your mascara flakes all over like nobody's yeah. business. And I, I thought I, the first Laura Mercier powder blurred. And I look like a uh, hypodermic Sally <laughs> from American Horror Story with mascara all around my eyes, crying with wet eyes. Totally wet, wet eyes. Wet yeah. eyes, dry skin. Dry <laughs> <laughs> you know, totally so you know what yeah urban decay tart and two-faced we knew we we're gonna be the most uh we're gonna take a break and we'll come back with that final verdict of where we're going with this totally so we'll be right yeah. back Okay, so we're back, and um, we're back. I literally, so executive decision, I just was about to turn off the cameras. Yeah, Kevin goes, he's like, yeah, because honestly, we have so many other brands, we're like, we're going to cut this we, into two parts. It's going to be too juicy not we, to keep going. we dissect this so much, so we're going to cut it into two episodes, and Kevin goes, he's like, all right, let's do it. Gets up, ready to shut the equipment down. And he goes, down. that and I was like, we have to say goodbye. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, oh God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. I know. So, wow. yes, guys, this is the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. We are cutting this into two episodes because this is what we love doing. Like, yeah. we talk about makeup as though we are dissecting. Oh, it's our politics. Yeah. It's our politics. It really is. So we would rather break this up and talk about our other brands because we mm -hmm. have others on this list. And thank you so much. Let us know if you're, especially if you're watching on YouTube, Spotify, let us know in the comments what you think of this whole dissection because mm -hmm. it's such a kind of, to me, it's beyond makeup. It transcends that into the sphere of business and capitalism and Relevance consumerism like, yeah. as a whole yeah. of what we are consuming and where our dollars deserve to go and mm -hmm. the accountability we need to hold the brands that are marketing to us and expecting all of our mm -hmm. fucking money the accountability we need to hold them to. So this is definitely something we want you to weigh in on. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel for your video episode one day early. Make sure to give us a five-star review and subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcasts because fun fact, Spotify and Apple Podcasts only show your podcast to new people based on the more five-star reviews you have. So just go there, say, listen, I love the gays. They're we so gay. Them. And I love I them. I love the girl. I love the girl. The girl. The girl. Girl. Just go to <laughs> Apple Podcasts because, and if you do this, we will know that it's you. Go to Spotify and Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review, and just in all caps, right? Girl. Girl. With I love many, this podcast. As many exclamation points as you can do before your finger gets tired. Yeah. Wherever you are, we hope you are happy, safe, and healthy. And remember, you are beautiful. 